1.2 amps. And let's make sure it's on the right setting. Ooh, burn up that resistor. You saw it, 1.3. See if we can do it again really quick. Okay, there you go, that's kind of fun. Welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today we're gonna to be going over all the test settings for the Astro AI DM6000AR. This video is also gonna be a tutorial for beginners for multimeters. So if you're new to multimeters and testing, we're gonna go over all that as well as the specifics of this multimeter. A lot of these different settings you'll find across the board on many different multimeters. They can vary a little bit from manufacturer or model. I have plenty of different videos on multimeters for y'all to check out in case this this isn't the exact one that you have. These blue buttons here at the top, we'll go through those as they apply to the necessary settings. A couple things to look out for when you're first getting set up with your meter. For most of these settings, your red lead will be on input, black lead on common, and then these two are going to be for taking amperage measurements. So that's what those are used for and that's why they're fused. We'll go more into that when we get to those settings. First, let's start with volts DC. Couple things to know is this dotted and dashed line. That's what indicates our DC. It's also displayed up here. You're going to see a minus sign popping up every once in a while. That's to indicate polarity. Up in the upper left-hand corner, auto. And then if you see a lowercase m, that's going to be for milli. And then if you don't see that there, it just means volts. So right now it's trying to measure millivolts and then it has volts. So we're going to be taking a measurement from a DC power source. That's what's up here, this block here. Now, when we're taking a DC measurement, polarity of our leads is going to be important. So what does that mean? Polarity is going to be our red lead needs to go to the power source of our DC and the black lead needs to go to the common. And that's going to give us an accurate measurement. We should see it pop up on our meter, 11.97 volts. If I do happen to switch the lead polarity, it's not that big of a deal, but on the meter, you're going to see that minus sign pop pop up on the very left hand side indicating that polarity is reversed. Next up, volts AC. That's indicated by this little oscillating wave right here. Polarity does not matter for taking AC measurements. However, it is still considered best practice. So down here on my AC terminal block, I have a hot. This black here is a neutral and green is earth. So if I go red to hot, black to neutral, we'll see about 11.8 volts. I can swap these around, still get the same measurement. But when we're measuring from an AC voltage source, we want to know what's our hot and what's our neutral. Something that we can do to decipher which is which is that's where our earth conductor can come in handy. If I want to try to figure out which is my hot and which is my neutral, if I go from hot to earth, I should still get about 12 volts. If I go from neutral to earth, See, it's reading 145 millivolts, not 145 volts. So that's why we wanna pay attention to what it's trying to say. And we can even hit the range button to make sure that it's reading in just volts and not millivolts so you don't get tripped up on that. So now we can see, oh, we're at 143 millivolts. Well, what kind of voltage is that actually on the neutral and earth? It's just what's known as floating or ghost voltage. It's not real voltage. So there's your AC measurements. Now, next up, we're gonna have ohms, continuity, and diode. So when we go to this setting, it's gonna default to ohms or resistance. I've got a, a few different resistors here. Also gonna be auto ranging for resistance, but we can use that range switch to change the resolution of our measurements. Lead polarity is not gonna matter for this type of measurement. And we can see it's reading 10 ohms. If I hit range, Now it's reading it in kilo ohms. I have 0 0.010 kilo ohms. And I can keep going. Doesn't register in mega ohms. Can move over to another resistor. Okay, this one is 5.5 kilo ohms. And you can run through that range and see it displayed in different resolutions or 0 0.005 mega ohms. If I hit it again, you'll see OL, that's for open loop or out of limits. In this case, it's out of limits because it's just in the ohm setting. This resistor is valued at 5.5K ohms. This is out of its window of range that it can read. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Now we can use the selector switch to move through these different settings. This one will default to ohms. If we select again, this little speaker up here is gonna indicate continuity. Now, what can that be handy for? That means if you have a wire that you're trying to test from one end to the other, it's gonna produce a tone 
if the continuity is good enough. Doesn't mean that this wire is in perfect condition. This wire could still be cut or have corrosion. Just means that electrons can flow from one side to the other. Really handy for trying to decipher if you have a lot of different wires, which wire goes to where on which side, if that makes sense. And then we can hit the selector button again, and it's gonna go to our diode test setting. Now for diodes, we wanna test in both directions. So let's start from this way. So this is saying an OL because a diode only allows electricity to flow in one direction. So right now it's trying to flow in one way through the diode and it's not able to, but electricity can still flow in the other direction. The number that you're seeing here is the amount of voltage drop that's happening across the diode. For this style of diode, we wanna see about five to 800 millivolts of voltage drop. This is millivolts. So that diode test good, that setting's good. Now we can move on to capacitance. Now these leads are not the leads that come with the meter. I use these leads for making videos. I just like these leads because it lets me put on these alligator clips for testing. Now there's a few notes. You should always look through the notes for testing capacitors for your meter. Okay, when testing capacitor, make sure your capacitor is discharged. You can short it out or use a resistor. On our capacitor, we're gonna see polarity indicated. So this is showing minus for negative. So negative is gonna go to our comm and then red is gonna go to the other side. You're gonna give it a few seconds. It's the meter's gonna put a current through it and charge up the capacitor and then it's gonna shoot out a reading for you. So again, we have this lowercase m and this f. The F is for farads. That's the, the unit of measurement for a capacitor. The M is for milli. If you see a little U pop up like this in this upper right hand corner, that's gonna be for micro. And then if you see an N, that's gonna be for nano. But we're looking at M, which is mic, for milli. And then make sure after you test your capacitor, you're going to want to discharge it so that it doesn't discharge accidentally. Next up is gonna be Hertz and duty cycle. That's what this HZ is for Hertz and duty. This button here is gonna allow you to cycle through which one. It's gonna start on Hertz. So Hertz is gonna be great for, think of Hertz as frequency. Now for in the US or North America, no, I think specific to US, cause I think Canada is at 50 Hertz, but our alternating current is at 60 Hertz. So that means in one second, the alternating current completes an oscillating cycle 60 times in one second. And we can measure that with our meter. You see, it comes back as 60 Hertz. For people in other places in the world, their alternating current coming from the, the wall, it's gonna be at 50. Let's take a look at duty cycle. Duty cycle is cool for something a little bit more advanced. And that's gonna be for looking at like pulse width modulation, like microcontrollers, kind of stuff like that. And duty cycle is if you think about a wave, like a square wave. And it's basically think of pulses or a square wave. So you have a square wave and it's pulsing a certain amount of time and it's expressed in percentage. So right now I have a 50% duty cycle square wave being outputted by this meter and it's being read by this meter. So that means that the pulse is on 50% of the time and off the other 50% of the time. So that's kind of a cool little more advanced setting. That'll be handy for automotive troubleshooting. You're gonna run into a lot of pulse width modulation and that type of application. Next is CNF. What's that for? Well, that's for Celsius or Fahrenheit. This meter in particular comes with a thermal couple attachment. Now you can get it separate thermal couples or thermal couple meters, but in place of our leads, we can have this probe and this can measure temperature. So right now it's saying it's displaying the temperature in Celsius. We can hit our select button and change that to Fahrenheit if that's a uh, unit that you're more familiar with. Thermal couples are pretty interesting. They are based off of what's known as the Seebeck effect. When you have two different conductors that are joined together and there's a temperature difference, they'll create a voltage, a very small voltage, and the meter can read that. That's what the thermal couples are for. It's great for taking accurate temperature measurements. HFE. Now this meter comes with an attachment like this. Bottom row here, NPM and PMP. This is for transistor testing. Anyone that's watched my other meter 
meter videos, I always recommend getting a dedicated transistor tester, something like this multifunction tester here. I've got it in my Amazon store. I don't even waste my time with transistor testing with meters. It seemed to be ineffective, but it also has this double slot area up here. That's another option for thermal couples attachments because you'll see in this style it'll say if you can read it but it says k and that's for k type and that's indicating to you what conductors they used for this thermal couple and when it has an end like this you can plug it into that and then you can plug it straight into your meter because this is not the best design that's not the way that you want this this is more of a standard setup for a thermal couple so that's what this attachment's for what that setting is for next we're going to move into our amperage settings this type of testing is going to be a little bit different and what do i mean by that well i mean for how you're going to have your lead set up and the way that you're going to take this test when we're measuring voltage we're measuring it in parallel, but for measuring amperage, we're gonna have to do it in series. And what does that mean? Basically, we're gonna use the meter as a jumper wire to complete our circuit. And this meter has three different amperage settings. So I'm gonna use these resistors as different loads to show you each setting. And another thing that we're gonna wanna pay attention to is these two ports here. This port is gonna be for our microamps and milliamps, but no more than 500 milliamps, or there's a fuse that will blow in here. Anything over 500 milliamps, you're gonna wanna use this port. It might come off a little bit confusing, so we're gonna run through it. We're gonna start with the smallest setting. And this is gonna be microamps, and this can measure it in AC or DC amperage. I'm just gonna be doing DC. I have my red lead set to the microamp port. Again, we don't wanna go over 500 milliamps for the red lead in this port. I'm at 12 volts. My resistor is rated for 47K ohms, which means I should have an amperage measurement of about 255 microamps. Okay, it's showing polarity is reversed there, so I can switch my leads around. Cool, I'm almost dead on. I'm at 253 microamps. For my next load, my resistor coming up 5.5K ohms. So that means that my load should come in at 2.2 milliamps. That should still be well within the range that is safe to use for this port because I'm well under 500 milliamps. Let's put it to the right setting. Cool, the math checks out. If you guys are wondering what's going on here, I'm using Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is very specific circumstances that you can use it for for calculating your amperage draw. Since I'm just using purely resistors, the math will work. It starts getting a lot more complicated even if you go from a resistor to a light bulb, but it checks out. I'm at 2.17 milliamps. Now my next load is gonna be a 10 ohm resistor. And if I do follow Ohm's Law for a 10 ohm resistor, I should be coming in at 1.2 amps. That's gonna be 1,200 milliamps. So that's gonna be well outside of the rating for this amperage port. So I'm gonna need to switch over. This port can handle up to 10 amps. Also note on the meter, 10 amps max for 10 seconds or else you're gonna burn this thing up. 1.2 amps. And let's make sure it's on the right setting. Oh. Ooh, burn up that resistor. You saw it, 1.3. See if we can do it again really quick. Okay, there you go, that's kind of fun. This resistor is not meant to carry that amount of current and that's why it started smoking like that. So it is electricity, it's dangerous, always be careful. And finally, the, the last setting that we're gonna have here is gonna be this guy right here. And that means that you can use an amp clamp attachment. I don't believe Astro AI makes the attachment that you can get. Here's another meter by Astro AI. This is an amp clamp. And so what you can do with an amp clamp is instead of using your leads as a jumper wire and having to measure in series, something I really don't like to do just because as you saw, it can be dangerous because you are having live current flow through the meter. You can just use an amp clamp like this. You can put it on 
your hot conductor and make amperage or current measurement. There you go. I hope that was helpful. Astro AI DM 6000 AR. If y'all have any questions or if any of you have any issues with this meter, I know some of the other meter videos I've done, people have brought up common issues or defects that they have. So let us know down in the comments so that other people can know whether or not this is a reliable meter or if it has a tendency to be defective. In my experience, the Astro AI stuff has been pretty reliable. I think they're, they're great meters in my opinion. A lot of versatility, a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, not endorsed by them in any way. There you go. I hope that helps.